Hello everyone, Crydax here and welcome back to our compact, clean, and tileable blueprint design series. Today working with refineries, the second to last building I will be doing for this size of designer. Uh, we'll be doing packagers in the next episode and then we'll be moving on to the Mark II blueprint designer. So I do want to note that this uh, build has a tiny bit of clipping with these uh, mergers and splitters and stuff in the corner. And if you don't like that, that's totally okay. If you want it to be, you know, perfectly clean, um, I'm okay with flexing a little bit. But if you're not, just build these uh, these two sets one tile further away. And this is the output end. Or no, sorry, this is the input end of the refinery that there's some clipping. The output end is fine the way it is. So without any further ado, let's dive in. As usual, you are going to take your refinery, if I can find it. And I like to point it towards the computer so that way you have the white output arrow of the blueprint facing towards the output of your buildings. And again, I personally like the inputs to come in from the left and out to the left. You can switch that around. You can make two versions of each blueprint. It's totally up to you, but this is just the version that I do. And so we'll build our stackable poles too high and kind of centered right on the edge of the inputs here. And then we'll go to the other side and do the same. And then we're going to build our a single of the uh, stackable pipeline supports right next to that. I think I just built two of them. No, I didn't. Okay. Now the nice thing is, unlike the coal generator blueprint, this one we can, we can just connect. We we can connect up nicely having a vertical, but again our verticals don't snap. So what we do is we place a splitter right behind the fluid input, which feels crazy, but it works. And then we can grab our pipeline junction, and now when we hold control, it snaps magically to where the splitter is. I love this trick, and I can't believe it took me that long to find it. I mean, it, I guess it does make some weird amount of sense, but normally you don't connect splitters to pipelines. So anyway, we gotta go noodle mode for these to connect, and I like that little kind of noodly look personally. If you don't like that, um, you can try a different configuration. Maybe if you move the pipe out one further, it connects nicer, though at that point I don't know if you can wrap the belt around it. Because as you're about to see, we're gonna connect up our belts. I'm gonna go with Mark III. Again, you can use whichever mark you have. Mark II should work, though, at this point in the game, if you have the blueprint designer, you should have Mark III belts, because they're just steel beams. So, in any case, we do the same thing we did before, where we go out one, two, three tiles with our belt, and then we're going to build a dummy lift, and then that should get us to the point where we can connect our, um, what's it called? Ah, what's it called? The splitter, merger, that thing, you know? All right, out three tiles, dummy lift, I'm gonna delete it so it's okay if it's mark five. And we climb up to the top here. And I can't remember if these ones work with the snapping or not. Uh, let's see, we need splitters. They do. And again, if they aren't snapping, you plop a splitter on top of the lift itself. And then it will always snap properly when you're on the belt. So I can't quite figure out why sometimes the dummy lifts make snapping work and sometimes the snapping doesn't work. It seems to be a bit inconsistent. So just go ahead and, you know, always plop the extra one on top if you want, but it works most of the time. And again, that sound. When you rotate it with the mouse wheel, you should be able to hear that sound, and that's what means you are connected properly and you don't need any stubby belt segments between things. I also want to note the spacing sometimes is different if you build from top to bottom versus bottom to top. In this particular case, you can see that they're lined up exactly the same, but sometimes you can get closer by going top to bottom or bottom to top. In this case, they line up perfectly. And that's it. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So that was our inputs. Again, coming in from the left. And then we're going to do our outputs coming out to the left. So this one feels almost exactly the same. You line up the stackable with the middle. You go up two tiles. And then you do that on the other side. And 
I guess. I guess the spacing on this side doesn't matter because we're gonna, you know, remove these because these are on the tiling end, we could call it. Um, and that way, the reason we remove those again uh, is so that when you're placing two of these blueprints next to each other, it doesn't end up, um, you know, it's weird on this side, you could put one closer with without clipping, but on this side, if you go one closer, it is clipping. So it's kind of a weird uh, non-symmetrical building. Anyway, all this to say, we want our outputs to go out to the left front and then pipes are omnidirectional, which is wonderful. And so maybe before I do the, the pipe splitters, I'll get the belts figured out so we have a bit better of a view. But again, we come out three spaces from the front here. And it's nice that it's kind of the same on the front and the back. You don't have to do anything different. So we'll place our dummy lifts so that snapping works. And then maybe if I'm lucky, I can aim at the splitter from down here. Eh, it doesn't seem like it. And when I say splitter, I mean merger. We need mergers here because this is the output. But control is making it lock without needing the dummy merger on top. But that is an option as usual. So we'll deconstruct these. I'm gonna go ahead and deconstruct the belt poles because I personally don't like the look of them here, but if you like to leave them, that's totally fine. It's not really gonna make much of a difference in your final blueprint. It will, uh, you know, cost a few extra resources, but those are probably resources that at the end of the day don't really matter for the bottom line of your factory. And again, we'll place splitters lined up perfectly with the fluid output here. And then, we should be able to go to our pipeline junctions, make them vertical, and they'll snap in front of the splitter. Yep, and then this one. And then we can deconstruct our splitters. And the last step is to make sure we're on noodle, connect up our pipelines. And there you go, now you've got your nice manifolded um, inputs and outputs. Also, I've I've heard some comments uh, complaining about manifolds or saying manifolds aren't good designs or whatever. That That's hogwash, to put it bluntly. Manifolds work fine. They do take a little bit of time to fill, but you are made of time and all resources are infinite. So perfectly balanced designs, while they are nice and fun, and sometimes it's a fun challenge to build, if you personally don't feel strongly that everything needs to be perfectly input balanced, then manifolds will work fine for you. Um, I like I have nothing against people who don't want to use manifolds, but if you're saying manifolds are bad, that that's too far. Manifolds are not bad; they work fine. All right, and the last thing we have to do is power. The power is on the front of these beasts near the top, which is a little annoying to get hooked up. So what I do is I go just to the side of the pipe because uh, we're not going to want to clip through the pipe. And so just to the side of the pipe and in line, kind of not clipping into, but right next to the lifter here. So right here is where we want to be. And then we do that for all three, like that. And you'll notice it's like not clipping with the pipe. It's just, just barely fine. Um, if there were the, some of those rings, you know, that sometimes show up in the middle of pipes, there might end up being a smidgen of clipping. But again, it's up to you. Is, is a smidgen okay or not? Personally, I'm fine with a smidgen. But if you're not fine with that, that's fine. We can be different. It's okay that people have different preferences. And yeah, there you go. There's your power all hooked up. And that's all you need to do for power. So as usual, we'll go ahead and save it. We'll save it as example, refineries, X3, Mark 3. It looks like I succeeded in uh, using Mark 3 belts. The refineries are the things that cost the encased beams, I hope, otherwise I screwed up. I should maybe double check that. But, uh, but yeah, we'll select the icon for refineries. We'll go ahead and save it. Uh, let me double check. Refineries do cost 10. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, now we'll go ahead and tile these just to show you what that looks like. Again, the white arrow is facing towards the output end and it's coming out the front left. And just like before, you can tile these either, you know, in a straight line, which would look like this. And sometimes you have to rotate the other blueprint to get it right. You kind of aim at the, if you aim at the bottom, it wants to make another blueprint on the bottom of it. So you have to aim up a little bit to get it to lock properly. 
and then you may or may not in this case you don't but you may or may not have to nudge the the buildings to make sure they're nice nice and close to each other um so you can tile it in a straight line and then the other option for tiling just like before is to go such that you flip it 180 and then so we could put it there and the you know these belts right here i'll lock the blueprint that would connect to that and the pipe here Actually, that's too close. Uh, you'd have to scooch it out a little bit. But that pipe would come out and connect to this pipe, so you might put a stand right there to make it look nice. So that's one version that's kind of more of a square. And also, it would take up a little more space, but you could blueprint it on this side, right? And if you wanted it to be symmetrical, then you'd have to do it like this. And then the inputs are way over here and you'd have to bring that pipe way around. So that would be a little weird, but you could do it that way too. Um, it's totally up to you. I'm gonna connect them in a straight line just to show you that and then we'll call it an episode. So we'll get it lined up and it is naturally close enough together. Now you can remove these if you don't like them. I personally generally leave them because sometimes I bring other resources above this area and this makes it easy to just add more stackables and then later you could bring something like you know computers across your base without kind of needing to set up new belt lanes so you're just going to connect the pipeline through just to here and you could just connect your belt right there but i like to remove the belt first and then connect it from splitter to the next splitter and then you only have one belt segment to upgrade later rather than that short stubby segment and then a long segment and that makes it far less likely that you're going to make a mistake later because let's be honest uh forgetting to upgrade those little short stubby belt segments is pretty much the number uh, the leading cause <laughs> of belt slowdowns at least in my base so i i like to make belts a single segment as often as i can all right and then those are connected and now we have to connect up that belt so we'll go mark three again straight from merger to merger you're good to go that's two connected Refineries, that's six refineries. I use this exact blueprint for my 20 gigawatt turbo fuel factory. You know, some people have talked about like, oh, it's only three refineries, you're gonna want bigger blueprints. Honestly, just plopping five of these next to each other and hooking them up does not take long. Really, the main savings of blueprints is the fact that your manifolds are already connected. The main savings isn't that you're doing three at a time versus four at a time. Even if you had, you know, a five refinery blueprint, it wouldn't save you that much time compared to a three refinery blueprint. The real savings are just that you're not having to connect every single pipe and every single merger to each other and to the building. That's the real savings. Even just having a single refinery with these pieces already set up would save you a ton of time. And some people have recommended that I do that. I personally would rather just have a three refinery blueprint and delete one if I don't need to. Um, but it's up to you. If you just wanna have one thing at a time and then you use those blueprints to chain together to make a bigger blueprint, you kind of have blueprintception, that's a great idea too. Anyways, I'm gonna call that the end of this video. The next one will be packagers. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments about the refineries blueprint and about how blueprinting has been going for you. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.